Gastroenteritis is a disease caused by inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract due to an infection. Viruses, toxins, bacteria or parasites gaining entry to the usually sterile small intestines tend to be the causative pathogens. The infection causes inflammation of the small intestines that leads to poor nutrient absorption resulting in abdominal pain, diarrhea and dehydration. An athlete's training block or events can be ruined by such illnesses. Prevention of these illnesses are critical. But if you're unfortunate enough to get poorly, you should know what you eat during this period can have a significant impact on the length of time you are suffering from symptoms. Did you know you can shorten the duration of your symptoms by just avoiding a certain food group? Eating the wrong foods can lead to symptoms of diarrhea, abdominal pain, flatulence for weeks, even after your body's immune system has cleared the infection. So why is this? And what single food group should you as an athlete temporarily avoid? So to answer this question, we have to take a closer look at the intestinal digestion and absorption of nutrients. The small intestines contains lots of enzymes on its lining called the brush border. Enzymes here are responsible for breaking down carbohydrate chains to their smallest subunit molecule called monosaccharides. This small sugar molecule are the only forms of carbohydrates that can cross the intestinal wall and be absorbed into the bloodstream. The movement of sugars into the blood also promotes water absorption. During gastroenteritis, the inflammation of the intestines damages the mucosa lining and dramatically decreases the amount of these enzymes present. The relative lack of enzymes means carbohydrates can't be broken down and be absorbed as effectively. Instead, excessive amounts of sugars and water stays in the gut lumen and transits into the large intestines. The abnormally high levels of sugar and water in the large intestines causes diarrhea due to osmotic effect. The microflora of the large intestines also goes into hyperdrive, leading to excessive fermentation of the sugars, producing copious amounts of gases such as methane, hydrogen and carbon dioxide, which leads to abdominal cramping and flatulence. After the body's immune system has successfully cleared the infection, the inflammation and damage to the gut lining persists. Slowly, the mucosal lining will repair itself and start to replenish the lost enzymes. There are many types of enzymes that are responsible for breaking down different sugar molecules. The slowest to get replenished or rejuvenated is an enzyme called lactase. Lactase is responsible for breaking down the sugar molecule lactose to its smallest absorbable subunits called galactose and glucose. Lactase can take weeks to replenish to pre-illness quantities. Therefore, if you consume lactose-containing foods during or in the weeks after gastroenteritis, you are likely to extend the duration of your symptoms, suffering from abdominal pain, cramping, flatulence and diarrhoea, longer than you need to be. For this reason, you have essentially become transiently lactose intolerant. Any lactose ingested in this period won't be broken down by the small intestines and will therefore transit unchanged into the large intestines, taking water with it and causing osmotic diarrhea. This lactose also gets fermented by the large intestine flora, releasing copious amounts of gases causing flatulence and abdominal cramping. So what food contains lactose? 
Well, the answer to that is essentially any dairy products. For example, milk, cheese, yogurts, butter, cream, and any products containing them in ingredients such as chocolate or yogurt coated cereal bars. Often patients think they are still poorly with the acute infective phase, but in fact, they have persistent symptoms due to eating the wrong foods, the foods that can't be digested. The period at which an athlete should avoid dairy after a bout of gastroenteritis will depend on the severity of infection and inflammation, but also the individual's ability to replenish their own small gut enzymes. It's a good idea to avoid dairy for a few weeks, then start to slowly reintroduce small amounts of dairy into the diet. If you stay symptom free, then it's a good sign you have adequate lactase replenishment to return to normal pre-illness eating patterns. I hope you found this interesting and also useful.